Hey, how's it going? I'm Isla Golden and welcome to my vlog. Alright, okay, so after two weeks of talking about stuff related to my jaw, I'm gonna shift the narrative a bit from things that are making my health a pain to things that are hopefully, hopefully in the long run going to make my health better. Um, so as I've mentioned in these vlogs before, um, I do fitness boxing on a daily basis. I'm using the Switch, the original Switch fitness boxing um, game <laughs> uh, for this and I have noticed quite a bit of a difference um, over the last almost two years. I think it'll be coming up for two years towards the end of next month. Um, no, not next month, April. Because um, it was around about April time during the initial lockdown that I started doing it. Um, so yeah, I'm still enjoying that, I'm still getting on really well with that, but what I have started doing now on my days off, rather than just doing the uh, 25 minute one that I'm doing as sort of like my standard one, um, because when I'm doing a work day, I'm doing it after I finish work, um, so I get home and I don't really want to be doing like a 45 minute exercise, um, but then on my days off, I'm feeling like I'm not quite doing enough, um, so rather than sort of like flipping between what kind I'm doing, um, I've instead decided that on my days off I'm going to use the uh, free boxing um, option to do some, basically do a bit more. And you're still sort of like following like the routines but they're like slightly different in how they kind of do it. So some of them are still the same sort of standard routines that you get if you're doing the daily boxing um, or the daily workout. Uh, program um, but some of them are like shorter versions or like like half of those routines some of them are like completely different routines short ones that I haven't actually done before um, at all um, and it's just like this nice kind of way of just like topping up my fitness a little bit um, I actually have rather quickly this year managed to shed the extra weight that I usually put on during the Christmas during the Christmas period, I basically go, okay, for this two weeks, I'm not going to worry about how much I'm eating. I'm not going to worry too much about how much I'm exercising. Um, I'm going to do sort of like the base amount of exercise that I need to do. Um, so this year it was like making sure I was doing my fitness boxing like on every single day. Not skipped a day. Not skipped a day. That I'm really proud of the fact that like I've got like a really good streak of, of fit, fit, uh, daily fitness boxing going at this point because it like it tracks it. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, you know, basically over the Christmas I'm kind of like, I'm not going to worry too much, I know I'm going to put on weight, um, I know I'm going to be here, there and everywhere, I'm not going to control how much I'm eating like I do uh, when I'm on my own, so always over the Christmas I usually put on about half a stone, on average, sometimes a little bit more, sometimes a little bit less, this time it was sort of towards definitely the, the half stone mark, and um, for once I've actually managed to shed it relatively quickly, Usually it takes me at least six months, if not the entire year. <laughs> like last year, I didn't start shedding it properly until, um, oh my god, until about September, October time, I think was when my weight finally started coming back down. Um, so yeah, mostly it is um, weight that I'm putting on over the Christmas, but obviously during the winter you do tend to eat a little bit more um, because the extra body fat helps keep you warm. Um, on top of that, the beginning time of the year is a very eat heavy sort of time of the year because like there's very family family members birthdays that i have to take into consideration there's my own birthday that i have to take into consideration there's easter where yeah i'm going to be eating all the chocolate you better believe that um and there's all that like relatively high level of eating that happens right after a period of high level of eating where you sort of like you, you never quite get it under control again until like after that point which is why quite often it's, it takes me most of the year to sort of get to a point where I'm actually starting to to lose it and go back to what is what, what I try to maintain um, as a sort of stable weight. Um, obviously uh, I'm at the point now where I don't need to lose weight in the sense that I'm not trying to be lighter than I am necessarily. What I'm aiming for is 
a maintainable weight that is comfortable for my joints. Um, and the little bit that I put on over the Christmas and the little bit that I put on over the Easter and stuff like that just pushes me up to the point where it's not necessarily painful for me to be at that weight, but it's also not necessarily the best for my joints to be at that weight. So when I talk about like losing the weight that I put on over the Christmas and losing weight that I put on over Easter and, and, and various things like that, it's not me saying, oh, I need to lose weight because I think I'm really fat. It's me saying, no, I'm trying to maintain a particular kind of weight because it's it's the easiest weight for me to maintain in terms of where my body is comfortable weight wise. And it's also um, a case of making sure that the amount of uh, weight that I'm putting through my joints isn't causing any extra stress on my joints because living with chronic pain, you do have to consider things like this. Um, and it, yeah, it, it's one of those things where like when I sort of like talk about being like feeling really fortunate that I'm in a position where I can still work um, a very active job and I can still do things like I, I always talk in terms of being grateful for that. But it takes a lot of work on my part to be able to maintain um, the, the, the level of lifestyle that I have at the moment. Um, and I, I'm fully appreciative of the fact that that's not how it is for everybody. And a lot of people struggle a lot. Um, and you know, that's, that's the circumstances that they're in. I'm just incredibly fortunate that I'm not in those circumstances at the moment. And I'm, I work hard to sort of keep myself away from that circumstance as much as possible. Um, so yeah, it, it, it's one of those things where for me, because painkillers don't work as we've discussed in the last couple of weeks, um, because painkillers don't work because I find the most effective thing for maintaining my weight is like, uh, lifestyle changes and dietary changes and like uh, keeping on top of physio type things well the fitness boxing because it works on strengthening um, my muscles and my core muscles in particular it is it's not necessarily physio in the traditional sense of physio and in, in the types of things that I've done in the past but it's working the same sort of muscle groups in a different way that I'm easily able to maintain and don't get bored with <laughs> that's the problem with the physios you, you do get to a point where you're kind of not doing it properly because you get a little bit bored with it um but because you, you you don't know which routines you're going to be doing each day and stuff like that it's a lot easier to um go into it and sort of like you're, you're working the same muscles you're building the same muscles you're doing very similar things like um in terms of what you would get out of physio but it's a different way of doing it and it's that kind of thing that i find most effective for me and for my body i know it's not the same for everybody and different people are going to have different circumstances but for me the lifestyle changes are the things that are the most effective so when i'm in a position where i'm kind of like yeah i i know i struggle a little bit more with shedding my weight or keeping my weight at the level that i need it at certain times of the year and my response to that has been you know what i've got time on my days off to do a little bit more exercise so that I'm not adding extra weight on my days off, which is again, something I was previously um, struggling with. Um, not necessarily that I was overeating on my days off. I just wasn't counterbalancing it enough um, with um, the amount of exercise that I do on my days off because I literally like do everything I need to do in the morning and then I sit down for the rest of the day. And, and some days everything I do in the morning is going to like, push it like my, my my days off just in general i'm not going to be burning as much as i'm going to be burning on my feet moving around all day in work um like it is a very physical job that i do like working in fast food it's a very tiring job it's a very physical job to be doing it's not perfect exercise uh so i would never say yeah if you just work in a place like that that's all you need to do in order to lose weight no, it's, it's not. You can very easily put on weight doing the job that I do, um, especially when you've got things like your lunch or your, your break food provided for you. I don't I, I don't eat the food anymore because I've been there for too long and I've just reached a point where it's more effective for me to be bringing in my own food and like having that little bit more control over my diet. But again, I'm thinking about it in terms of someone who finds that keeping on top of my weight helps maintain my mobility um so i'm not thinking of it in terms of what's necessarily the most cost effective or what i necessarily might enjoy more um it is a lot of hard work to maintain your pain conditions through lifestyle changes through activity levels through dietary changes and this kind of thing and, it, and you know it, it is a lot 
of like it is a lot of work like hands down it is a lot of work to maintain my body in a way that allows me to do the things that I want to be able to do um that's why I fully understand why it's not for everybody and why I understand that some people by the time they are recommended lifestyle changes are past the point where it would be as effective for them or they're not getting the right support that they need in order to bring them to a point where those lifestyle changes would be effective for them and for some people it's not going to be effective for them regardless because the way the condition affects their body the way you know there are lots of different factors at play that's why I talk so much about you know being fortunate and feeling really fortunate that I'm able to do as much as I can do and that I've been able to bring myself back from a really bad point with my pain um to a level where I'm able to not completely control it um it you know there are still times where I will get a flare-up and in the bin I've just done something stupid and all my flare-ups are usually I've done something stupid um but that like stupid thing can go on to affect me for like a few days or a few weeks sometimes a bit longer depending on what that stupid thing is that I have done that has caused the flare-up to begin with um and that again that's what a lot of people don't appreciate is my body is a lot slower at recovering from uh, a lot of things so what might take one person two or three days to sort of recover from might take me two or three weeks um because like the insomnia especially is the biggest factor for my recovery times i don't sleep properly therefore my body is slower at recovering um so something that might you know not necessarily bother somebody else or won't bother them for very long can have me like struggling for a good long while because that is just how my body works um i do what i can to make sure that i don't do the super things that will do it but like mostly i'll do it without thinking about it um quite often like in work i will do like just a little bit too much or i will lift something that i shouldn't be lifting just because it's quicker it's easier there isn't anybody else around who can do it so i will do it and i know i shouldn't and i will know right away that i shouldn't have done it and like three days later i'll be going why am i in so much pain oh right i did something stupid again so i can usually trace it back like nine times out of ten it's very rare for me to get a flare-up where i might like, i've no idea what has caused this flare-up i've no idea why i'm experiencing this right now um because i, I can't trace it back to anything um and likewise see i would never say that stress causes me to be in pain but if i am more stressed i'm more likely to notice the pain that i am in um because obviously because you're stressed out you're much more hyper aware um of yourself um so stress doesn't increase the level of pain i'm in it just increases my awareness of the level of pain that i'm in because my brain isn't able to sort of handle all of these things at the same time um, in a way that I would be able to when I'm not stressed. So again, there are lots of different factors at play for myself and for other people who don't who deal with chronic pain, where there is no one size fits all um, solution for for anybody or for anything. Um, everybody has to sort of approach their own bodies in their own way and find what works for them. Um, in as much as they can um as i said for me the most effective things that i do are the lifestyle changes are the dietary changes um are keeping on top of my weight um on basically <laughs> on basically being very strict <laughs> um about you know what i you know what i can do and what i don't do i mean not strict as i should be but basically i you know i'm very focused on maintaining my activity levels so that i can maintain my activity levels and it is a lot of hard work and i'm not gonna sit here and sort of like say oh yeah everybody who has chronic pain this is what you need to do because no it, it's not what everybody needs to do it's not what is right for everybody it's right for me it works for me because i have found a way to make it work um and it was hard work getting to that point of making it work but once I kind of reach that point of making it work, it is the best form of um, 
pain management that I can do, and that's why I, I continue to do it. Um, but as I said, it's not going to be right for everybody, and it's not going to be what everybody well, you know can do in, in a lot of cases. So, like, I would never kind of sit here and go, oh, yeah, if you suffer from chronic pain, the best thing you can do is exercise, because no, I'm not even saying for me the best thing that I can do is exercise. What I'm saying for me is maintaining my muscle strength is the best thing that I can do. Keeping on top of my weight is the best thing that I can do. Getting fitter is not the point. It's not about getting fitter, it's about maintaining what my body is capable of by making sure that I am working on the things that allow my body to be in a kind of equilibrium. Um, by which I mean by maintaining my body's muscular strength, I'm supporting my joints by um, maintaining my weight, I'm not putting extra strain on my joints. And a lot of what I do is about making sure that my joints are in the best position that they can be in, um, because a lot of my pain is not necessarily focally in the joint area, but it is extending down from that. Um, so, like muscular weakness. Um, so, like, be, and it's to do with the hypermobility. Like, my my fibromyalgia is there because of the poor maintenance of my hypermobility because I was diagnosed with it so late, um, essentially. So by doing the things that I need to do in order to make sure that my hypermobility is not being treated because there's no cure for it, but is being managed, um, means that the fibromyalgia flare-ups aren't going to be as prevalent because I am doing the work to maintain the structures that would be causing the pain in the first place so yeah i mean as i said it works for me that doesn't mean it's going to work for everybody if it's something that somebody thinks it might work for them i would 100 percent encourage them to do it because if you don't try you don't know but i would always be on that okay yeah but you know listen to your body listen to what your body's telling you start off slowly build it up you know, don't go from zero to 100 because your body won't cope with that and it'll make things worse and then you won't continue doing it. Start at a five. Start at a three if you need to. Start at whatever low level you need to start at in order to see if this is something that might benefit you. And don't be afraid if it doesn't benefit you because if it doesn't benefit you, you know, that's not your fault. That's nobody's fault. It's just it's not the right thing for you you've got to listen to your body 100% and this is like speaking as someone who spent so much time fighting <laughs> to be listened by the medical industry the one thing that I would 100% say to anybody who's you know suffering from anything is nobody knows your body like you do if you know there is something wrong don't let yourself be fogged off <laughs> Because that just gets you into a situation where you're constantly, like, you know more could be done, but you constantly, it's not happening because you're allowing other people to sort of downplay it. It is a fight, it's a battle. Like, living with chronic pain is a constant battle. Where Whatever the way that you do it, whatever way you go about it, however you manage to, you know, maintain your condition or not maintain your condition, depending on, you know, the circumstances that you're in, because it's not possible for everybody to maintain their condition just because of the level of pain that they might be in in the first place or the point in time in which they started seeking help or the mental place that they're in with their pain, because that does like being in pain all the time is exhausting. Like, even when I don't take the fact that, you know, I do a lot of work to maintain it, I'm still in pain all the time. It's just, it's level of pain that I can cope with. But when I'm stressed, like I said, that can make me notice it more, which means it's more tiring for me. When something is flared up, that is more tiring for me. Being in pain all the time is, is exhausting, both physically and mentally. So it is not possible for everybody to maintain their pain levels. And, like, if there's one thing that, you know, I'm, I'm hoping anybody watching this will take away from this, is you've got to let that person do what's right for them at that point in time. Because nobody will know their body better than that person will know their body. And if they're telling you that won't work, 
don't, like, don't push it. Like, they know. That's all I'm saying. They know. I mean, you can... And again, I wouldn't even necessarily say you could give them advice, because, like, speaking as somebody who gets the same advice from, like, everybody, no. Like, believe me, they've tried it before. <laughs> they have probably tried it more than once before, because people keep telling them to try it, even though they all say, no, it doesn't work. Um, it, yeah, it, it's a case of they know their own bodies. Listen to what they're actually saying and what they're actually telling you and believe them because nobody wants to live in pain but some people it's not a choice it's not something they can control it's not something that they can switch on and off some people are going to struggle with it more than other people based on what conditions they have based on other things that might be affecting their body based on like even based on like their mental health and again i'm not saying that mental health causes physical pain i'm just saying that mental health can make you notice your physical pain more in which case it will feel worse than it would if you're in a good place of mental health but it would it's probably the same level of pain it's just in one scenario your mental health is good enough for you to deal with that pain that you're in and in another scenario your mental health is not good enough to deal with that pain you're in and if you're in pain all the time constantly you're more likely to have poor mental health um and as i said it's exhausting being in pain all the time is exhausting and like as i said i work hard to maintain my pain levels but i'm still in pain all the time so there are times where even if i'm not in a flare-up i'm just exhausted because it is very exhausting <laughs> It's very exhausting having to deal with the level of pain that my body throws at me because I have the conditions that I have. Alright, okay, this video went on a lot longer than I was expecting it to. <laughs> and it sort of started in a completely different place to where it finished. Um, I don't know if I should apologise for that or not. I hope you guys have sort of taken on board what I have said. Um, as I said... You know, I'm, I'm speaking as somebody who, who suffers from chronic pain and, you know, who does understand that, you know, these are all things and these are factors and yeah, 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 I don't want to keep repeating myself. Um, I hope you found this one sort of interesting. Um, I hope you're looking forward to seeing whatever it is I'm going to be talking about next time and I will see you next time. See ya. If you've enjoyed this video, consider checking out some of my others, and if you like what you see, consider liking and subscribing. Thanks for watching, see ya!